Dear colleagues, this is a cataract with grade 3 nuclear sclerosis and well dilated people. And I didn't expect any challenge in this case. But let us see what happened and how I managed the odd situations. By this time, the main incision has been placed. Viscoelastic substance is injected into the anterior chamber. And now, I'm going to make a stab incision on the left side of the main incision about two and a half clock hours away. Now capsular excess is to be done. I incise the anterior capsule with 26 case band needle, raise a big flap, hold this flap with uterita forceps. Now I go anti-clockwise. Now when I reach six o'clock, the capsule tended to go to periphery, but I could easily bring the excess back on track and complete the rexis and it was an adequate sized rexis. Now hydrodissection is done. Fluid wave is passed just underneath the anterior capsule. Hydrodelineation is done. The nucleus is tapped. But I didn't rotate the nucleus nicely. Just give a nudge to the nucleus and now I am going to manage the nucleus clean the superficial cortical matter bury the teeth into the substance of the nucleus have a firm purchase on the nucleus and chop it like this now I rotate the nucleus, chop it at another place. Now this free nuclear fragment is emulsified with ultrasonic energy and it is removed. Ultrasonic energy used in this case is 60%. Flow rate is 45 ml per minute and vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury. This is the last nuclear fragment and it is being emulsified very comfortably and now see what happens I inject viscoelastic substance and as in other cases I'm going to use a Simcoe cannula to remove this cortical matter but remember that I didn't do nice hydrodissection and nuclear rotation and see what happens as I pull, see, there is almost 180 degree of genular dialysis. So I regurgitate it and I know that I will not be able to manage this case without using any, any device that will support the capsular bag. And I have asked for a capsular tension ring, a CTR. And I inflate the capsular bag with SPMC, with hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose, making another side port at 8 o'clock. And now this is the capsular tension ring. And it must go in the capsular bag. And here it is. It is going posterior to the cortical matter from the epinuclear anterior aspect of the epinucleus so it is in the capsular bag and now I take a Sinsky hook in my left hand and a McPherson's forceps in my right hand the Sinsky hook goes to the eyelet at the to the prong of the trailing end and now I take a chopper in my right hand and this is very important without taking the chopper in your right hand and without taking this precaution don't try to release the CTR the chopper places on the trailing end and it gets released and now the bag is supported and I know that I will be able to remove the cortical matter though 
I'll take a little longer time than other cases and I'm very much gentle now I'm not pulling it with greater force just gently pulling it going through the side port and here I am trying to aspirate remaining very near to the equator so I have cleaned the cortical matter from 7 o'clock and now I go towards 9 o'clock give a tangential pull towards 8 o'clock and then I aspirate the cortical matter now I go through the incision that I made at 8 o'clock and remove the cortical matter from the superior aspect from 12 o'clock 11 o'clock tangential pull and try to aspirate being there don't pull much towards the center that's it the cortex is nicely cleaned and now there are some cells inferiorly I could remove I could remove it partially by the Simco cannula so the main reason in this case main reason of genular dialysis is improper hydro dissection hydro dissection was not good and I didn't bother to rotate the nucleus epinucleus and started managing the nucleus which and now in this case I have selected a multipiece intraocular lens hydrophobic multipiece intraocular lens from about sensor one sensor multipiece and in such cases I increase the main incision to about 3 millimeter the main incision was 2.8 millimeter now it is about 3 millimeter advantage is without stretching the cartridge goes into the anterior chamber and now I am screwing out the lens the leading haptic went into the capsular bag but it came out now I take a Macpherson's forceps hold the drilling haptic and place the drilling haptic in the capsular bag here it is the drilling haptic has gone into the capsular bag now I dial the lens and I find that the leading haptic has come out of the capsular bag so here I'm going to dial it into the capsular bag again here it is the haptic has gone into the capsular bag now now both the haptics are in the capsular bag lot of viscoelastic substance is there in the antechamber and in the capsular bag and these viscoelastic substance must be removed very nicely otherwise there will be increased intraocular pressure in the postoperative period so I am thoroughly irrigating out the viscoelastic substance from the capsular bag from the antechamber with the help of this Simco cannula it is double irrigation means there is irrigation from the side and the port which is for aspiration is being used for irrigation for flashing out and now I hydrate the 
side ports. The stroma on either side of these step incisions are hydrated so that these wounds close. And now I'm going to place the haptics in such a way that one haptic supports the area with genular dialysis. The CTR is supporting but this haptic will provide additional support. Now I form the antechamber and conclude the case. Thank you very much for watching. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Please face challenges with lot of vigor. Wish not it were easier. Wish you were better.